my name is Dave Pachta. I live in San Antonio, Texas, and I realize that there's a number of you that I haven't had a chance to meet yet. So I'm here to talk a little bit about the Disciple Center for Education, where it came from and what it is that we are here to talk to you about. So my wife and I served in the full-time ministry for 27 years. Most of that time, 17 of those 27 years, was spent working with teens in what we came to call youth and family ministry. We spent many of those years in Chicago, and that journey of working with youth and family also took us to Johannesburg, South Africa. Part of that journey included really developing teaching ministries across Africa. Most of our church leaders had had no theological education and being that I was appointed a teacher in Johannesburg, we started with an academy in Southern Africa in Johannesburg, and then that quickly spread to Abidjan, Ivory Coast for the French-speaking West Africans, and in East Africa in Nairobi, Kenya. So when we came back to the United States in 2014, there was a lot of traveling back and forth to continue to teach and work with those academies. Well, in 2016, on one of my trips home, I got home and felt like something was really broken inside. And honestly, it was a time of real discernment and evaluation and soul searching. I took three months off from the ministry and started exploring what was going on. During that period of time, I started asking what it is that I felt like I needed. And I started looking for a PhD program that studied contemporary spirituality. What I found was at the top school that did that work at a PhD level was 12 minutes from my house, and I didn't know that. So after a year of attending classes and praying and talking to friends, I ended up resigning from the ministry in 2017 so that I could become a full-time student, and that's what I've been doing for the last five and a half years. Now, over the last couple of years, I've gotten reengaged with the teacher service team and working with our churches across our fellowship in helping to think about and develop what teaching ministry can and hopefully in the future will look like. A huge part of this journey has been three families that came alongside me to help sponsor me as patrons during this five and a half year expedition. Uh, Alex and Patty Hunter in Atlanta, Val and um, Irene Koha in Boston, and Kevin and Nanshul Grady in Detroit. After they started helping me, there started being a lot more conversation about what can be done to help others and how do we really work to come alongside the ICOC and develop more robust teaching ministries. So after an initial meeting in 2019 in Atlanta to discuss these possibilities, and then a subsequent meeting with a smaller group in January of 2020 in Chicago, um, Alex and Patty Hunter put in uh, an initial investment and we launched the Disciple Center for Education. The purpose of the Disciple Center for Education or the DCE was originally to help other people really get an education at that, you know, specialist level. How do we develop specialists across the ICOC that work in all these different fields that can help us from a diversity standpoint and an expertise standpoint, but ultimately that also had ministry abilities so that they could really help us to develop a church building type teacher in our local congregations. So how do we create teachers who can train teachers? And just as in the medical field, you know, we need nurses and we need general practitioners, but sometimes we need specialists for heart surgery or knee replacements. Uh, we felt the need to develop specialists in the ICOC. So that was one of our first ambitions. The second was, how do we create a space to talk about these important thought leadership issues? Where are we exploring culture and hermeneutics and social justice issues? And so we decided to launch a journal that's now called Telios, and it's been going now for the last two years. And it's actually been fantastic. It's being published by one of the top academic publishers in our country. So that's been a great success. So on the training specialists piece, we spent a long time finding applicants and really sorting through how do we find and identify these people that from around the globe can represent that kind of diversity and can really help to 
do ministry so that they have both that pastoral and the academic side to them. And so in doing that, we found five scholars that we now are funding and partnering with and are part of a cohort that we work together and it's really become this fantastic journey. So I wanted to introduce them just really quickly to you so you know, you know who they are. Carlos Santos is in Madrid. He was in the ministry there, um, leading the church actually at the time of his application. He is just entered a top level program, a Jesuit school, studying religious philosophy in Madrid. Cherie Gale is in her third year of her PhD at Georgetown. She's doing religious studies, focusing on women's studies, and just had to learn Arabic this summer because she's doing a lot of work with the ancient Near East. Mari Sim is in Tallinn, Estonia, and many years in the ministry has helped to develop the teaching ministries across Europe and is now pursuing his PhD in financial ethics. Then we have TJ Parisi. TJ did youth and family ministry in the New Jersey area and trained for many years under Steve Kennard, one of our longstanding respected teachers in New York. He got accepted into the top, one of the top at least, Old Testament PhD programs in North America at Baylor, and he just started there this fall. And then Hannah D'Souza is our fifth. She was raised in London by her family in the ministry there and has taken on this passion for both ministry and academics. She's interned in Boston, and then she went to do the Revive Eastern Europe program with Sean and Lena Wooten. Being that she got her master's degree at Oxford in Victorian literature, she needed a theological master's degree to bridge before she went into a theological PhD program. She got into Harvard, and now she's doing her theological master's degree at Harvard. Uh, long term, she'll be studying the role of narrative in biblical literature and the role that, that uh, literature plays in our development of our faith, which is super exciting. So anyway, I tell you all that to say over the last two to three years, the DCE has set out some pretty ambitious goals, but it's been pretty amazing to see what has happened in all that. Um, so now we're thinking about next steps. So I'll be defending my own dissertation here in November. And assuming that's successful, I will be coming on as the executive director of the DCE. And our next step is partnering with local congregations and developing stronger and more robust teaching ministries in our churches. Now, of course, because of the connection and the amount of hands-on work that's going to be, we're really trying to think about very select, very few partners, but building some good long-standing partners that we can really help make a difference. And so what we're proposing is that we build this partnership over a three-year period. And there's a number of things that we're thinking about that we will be able to bring from the DCE perspective. It's important to know about our team, um, Alex and Patty Hunter, who really initially had this ambition and drive and even the seed money to start this whole thing, are both on the board and very actively engaged in this whole process. Uh, he's a true partner in this, as has become Valder Koha, Valder and Irene in Boston. Valder is an elder and he's a teacher and he's currently chairing our International Churches of Christ Teachers Committee. Um, he's become an active, very involved uh, partner in this journey together. And then um, our other board member is in Detroit, and his name is Kevin Grady. And Kevin has actually been a supporter of my education back from my master's degree. He helped me with my master's degree. He came on to support me during my PhD work and is very also driven and visionary about how education can really help mature our churches in our fellowship. So this team is really looking forward to partnering with churches like you. So what we're proposing is that in this three-year period, we do a number of things. One, we help to develop teaching curriculum and a plan for what kind of teaching can happen in your congregation. Two, that we will want to actively be involved in helping to train leaders and build teaching capacity. So we need to figure out what that looks like, but maybe that is helping to create kind of a D-group of potential teachers and working together and developing people, there's really two important sides of that, learning academically, but being able to teach is also another important thing. And how that person works with the leadership is important. 
Um, number three, that we would be able to host a couple events locally, which would be either teaching events or retreats. And we can, you know, figure out what that looks like, where we bring in experts or specialists, uh, great speakers, scholars, people that can really direct us in that kind of event. Number four, uh, we really have a strong vision for building an Ephesians 4 type of partnership, meaning Ephesians 4 paints this picture of leaders working together to build up the body, elders, evangelists, teachers, worship leaders, campus leaders, youth and family leaders. How do we create that dynamic for a more mature church? And I think that's something a lot of our churches are really trying to figure out is how do we empower people in their gifts to really work together to build maturity? Uh, number five, as you heard these great young scholars or emerging scholars, uh, we really are trying to create connections for how they can get involved in doing this kind of developmental work. And so this would also give access to those five folks. And then, you know, the other thing we're thinking about is as we try to build this and create this, having someone representing your ministry as part of this, as an advisor to what we're doing with the DCE would become really important. So that's the kind of partnership we're looking for. I'm sure that you're going to have a lot of questions about this, and we want to make sure that we answer those in whatever way we can, which if that means a Zoom meeting or emails or, you know, conversations, we want to be available to do that. I look forward to meeting you in person.